live and moving here. Thank you so much for stopping by as we look at um, the Juno front row system. I'm going to be talking about how I use it in my classroom and really just how it works overall. To start with, I want to give you a little bit of a sense of what I'm doing in my classroom. It's a little different because I have the camera set up, but let's look at my system. We've got standard desktop, Dell desktop computer here on the desktop. A key tool that I use all the time with this computer is this document camera right here. In this case, is a hover cam. It's a pretty good document camera. It has some uh, software that comes with it for screen capture, but I'm not doing a walkthrough of that today, and I haven't gotten good enough at using it to do a walkthrough. Now, this Juno system, I just got a week and a half ago, and this is when you buy the Juno system. This is the front row Juno unit, and it comes with a couple of key pieces. They are... Uh, Lots of shocking happening there. That's not good. Um, you've got the microphones. There's a pendant microphone and an independent microphone and the amplifier unit. And we're going to look at those. I'm going to unplug these. How is that? Okay, so the mic level definitely just changed. Sorry about that. I'll try to speak up to uh, accommodate that. You can move the puppet out of the way. That's just distracting. If you have questions as we're talking about the Juno, please tweet the questions at me at Sam Patui. Um, we want to talk a little bit about the amplifier. Then I'm going to talk about the screen capture and the quality that it does and the front row software. And then I'm going to talk about the uh, workflow. And then we're going to finish with any possible drawbacks. Um, the amplifier is really one of the reasons that I was first interested in this unit. I'm a big fan of an amplified classroom because studies show that when your voice is amplified, students listen more attentively. They kind of have to pay attention. Um, in addition, when you're using an amplifier, you have a wider range of so sounds that the students can hear. Like my stage whisper, they can all hear it when I whisper at them and I'm wearing the amplifier. Um, it also just increases engagement. And as a teacher of some 10 plus years now, my voice gets tired. <clears throat> In fact, you can hear it now, even though I was using this amplifier most of the day. This is the uh, pendant microphone. It's not complex at all. There is one button, and that button mutes and unmutes it. I, uh, you can probably hear a slight difference in the quality of the voice because I've got the amplifier on right now, but it doesn't actually change the volume very much. Hopefully I won't get too much uh, feedback here because I'm kind of in front of the amplifier. So that's the microphone. This is the amplifier. The amplifier has three speakers built into it. And I'm gonna mute the micro I'm gonna mute the amplifier so we don't get feedback here as I come over to kind of show it to you. There's an LCD control panel on the amplifier, and you've got a volume up and down. In addition to different settings options, you've got the voice command, priori teach, OptiVoice, restore defaults. These all just give you finer control over what's going on. And priori teach makes it so that even if you're managing multiple audio feeds through the Juno system, Whenever you, as the teacher, turn on, the, turn on your microphone, it gets priority. Then here's all of the different audio devices that you can manage, one, two, three, and four, and their relative volume. And this is the microphones and their relative volume, and then this brings you back to the base unit. Uh, very quickly, for if you have multiple uh, audio devices, you can plug them all. This can be a whole class amplifier system. You've got a small jack here that will accommodate, sorry, right there, that will easily accommodate an iPod or iPad output, anything with a headphone jack you can plug into there. There's a more sophisticated standard RCA style jack port here. So you see you've got 
three spots for audio in here that are RCA style. And you've got an audio out here that even has a manually adjustable output control. So if you want to adjust how loud the microphone is, as far as how hot the feed going into your computer is for recording, you can set that level right here. This is an incredibly handy feature. Um, so that's the amplifier itself. On the top, this is an infrared receiving unit, which means that this amplifier works very well if it's out and seen in the room. Um, initially, I had it set up under a desk to kind of keep it out of my way, but that was a bad plan because under the desk, it won't pick up the, uh, it won't pick up the infrared signal from the pendant mic at all. It needs a good, clear line of sight, and the sensors have to be unobstructed. The company does sell additional infrared sensors, so you can, if you have a large room or a room with a bunch of, like, alcoves in it, you can set it up so that you can be heard from anywhere in the room. Um, so they'll, they'll relay the infrared signal across there for you. Uh, just a quick tour of the rest of my room. There's the interactive whiteboard that is pretty useful, uh, especially when you're able to capture what's going on. And then there's the rest of the room. Now this, I actually set this up as a session that any of the teachers that work here could come and learn about this screen capture system. But it's in the afternoon and it's April and they just have other things to do. That's fine. Enough of my pity party. Um, let's talk about screen capture. So, screen capture, just the idea that I'm going to take what I'm doing on my computer and record it can be pretty useful when you're teaching. Especially, I'm going to mute this again because I'm close to it. Especially when you're teaching um, something that's easy to put through your computer. So what Front Row does, there's this Front Row program that ships with the uh, Juno that really increases functionality a lot. So this is a lesson capture system, which means it's going to give you the choice of recording just the audio of what you're doing, just the video of what you're doing, or a combination of the audio and video. So what this means is that when I'm teaching, I can, it's audio and this. So it's, it's called a screencast, so it's getting, you know, this whole screen. Here, I'm actually explaining to the kids in my class guys, what I'm doing. Guys, Sarah. So this, uh, for this capture, I was actually writing directly on the interactive whiteboard, speaking through the pendant mic, and the interactive whiteboard was mirrored on my... Uh, desktop computer. It's run from the desktop computer, so I was capturing exactly that. Um, give me a minute. I'm just going to send another tweet out here. So when you're doing screen capture, basically your, anything that's happening on your desktop, you, can, you will be capturing. Um, for this one, I set it up as the entire desktop. Oftentimes with screen capture, you can determine what portion of the screen you record. So when I tell it to record, it grabs everything that's happening on the screen and it grabs the audio that's happening at the same time. You'll see, you know, I hit the record button and I'm gonna turn on the microphone and step away from the front of, I'll turn this down a little bit. Uh, you can tell actually the amplifier is pretty good at not uh, feeding back, otherwise there'd be a lot of squeaking at this point. There, there is some of that. Uh, an optimum level I find for the amplifier is just slightly louder than my voice. It changes the quality, it changes the direction a little bit, and that's all I need for the kids to pay attention 
And I need to have the microphone on in order for the sound to be captured by my desktop computer. My desktop is a Dell and it doesn't have a built-in mic. So I have to make sure that microphone's set up and turned on. So right now I'm recording what we're doing here on the screen. And you know I can do any number of things that would be related to my class. Um, so let's go to live binders because I'll often use live binders to organize information for my classes. And it's not uncommon for me to be talking about a live binder in class. Uh oh, now you know my email. Um, so we'll look at this one, my PLN all in one place. So, you know, if we go to my profile pages, we can see all of these different websites, right, where I have a profile, some of which I've forgotten about. Hey, Adam. If you don't know edgeclipper.net, it's a good one to get to know. Adam Bello, shout out right there. Um, so, it's do making this screen capture video. And here we can see what we're doing. And I can come over here and write on the board and draw attention to something. I can say I'm envious of this iPhone case, whatever it is. And that's all going to be recorded. And then when I'm done with the lesson, I can, I will stop the recording. And this task pops up. Now this is the encoding of the video. This happens as soon as you're done recording. Um, and video encoding is, we're moving into talking about the workflow now. Video encoding is key to the workflow. So, Um, what it's doing right now, it used to be that when I was done shooting a video, I would need to move it from my camera to the computer and into a program to encode it. Or even when I finished making the recording in my computer from some other program, I would need to do some encoding. What the front row system does really well is it automates this workflow. By the first step is you actually program in your schedule. So this is my weekly schedule that I've programmed in and it uses which block happens on which day. We're lucky enough to have a different schedule on every single day. So this allows me to really focus in on, you know, I know that block two Thursday happens from 1020 to 1120. If I make a recording between 1020 and 1120 on Thursday, it's going to auto name that for block two, so that the name of it will say block two directly on it. Um, then what happens, you can see that the task has disappeared here, it's actually crunched that video already. Then what happens is it loads automatically, it automatically puts that recording into a Google Drive folder. Now, I've set the share permissions on this Google Drive folder to be public to anyone who has the link, which means these videos are stored on Google Drive, and this whole folder is accessible by all of my students, and they can watch, copy, etc. these videos. Uh, this saves me from uploading to YouTube. So I have videos hosted on Google Drive available to my students. And that's pretty cool. In fact, that's one of my favorite parts of this, is learning that by putting videos in a shared folder on either Google Drive or Dropbox, mind you, my students can get to it without me having to upload it. So, in the realm of digital workflow, what Front Row has done is they've eliminated the two things that really to, made it time consuming to flip my class. 
they've eliminated processing the video and uploading the video. That is amazing to me because I've always said that flipped instruction or even lesson capture isn't going to become regular in classes until it's time invisible. And that's what GoFront Row, uh, that's what Ju the Front Row Juno system has done. Their Twitter handle is at GoFrontRow. I've been tweeting at them all day trying to make sure they tune in. Who knows if they have. Um, but again, if we look at this folder, right, we can see the recordings that I've made. Um, today is the 16th of April. And I made this one today about Midsummer's. I made this one today. I'm not sure. Ah, here it is. Because we're outside of school time, I know. this is the screencast I just made. I'll play a little bit of it in a minute. But because we're outside of school time, it named it with just the room number. So that says room 106, 16th of April, 2013. So it named it with just the room number because we're outside of that scheduled time. I could have had it name it with my name. That was a default that I set up. So this folder I then post on my LMS or learning management system, which we have Schoology. And all of the students have a link to this folder and they can go in. If they want to see a class, they have the access to the block and the period and the day. So that gives them all the information they need to know. So we're moving towards the end. We've talked about the fact that this system is an amplifier, and that's the first thing I love about it. And then we talked about the screen capture, which is powerful and amazing. Very clear picture, doesn't seem to take up too much space, good audio settings. And then the management of the files amazing. So you might be asking yourself, Sam, you wouldn't ask yourself, Sam, but you know, what's wrong with this? And honestly, I'll tell you exactly what's wrong with this. The pendant mic, how many times a day are my kids saying, what is that? And I wear bow ties a lot of the time, so it even makes it worse because they're used to me having something pretty and classy and silk around my neck, and instead I'm wearing this, which Sometimes I refer to it as a tracking device. I tell them it's classier than an ankle bracelet. I've told them it's the only way the administration knows that I'm in my room and doing my job because they use this to locate me. Um, there's a lot of jokes made about it, but really it's like, meh. And the number of times I end up somewhere else on campus and people are just like, ha ha, you're wearing a collar. And, you know. So it's a tiny thing to be picky about. And honestly, if I wanted to, I could walk around like a lounge singer the whole time with my handheld mic and talk this way. But I prefer to give this to the kids and point it at them. And they're like, oh, I can't talk, which sometimes is a powerful thing to do in class. So I hope that this was useful. I'm going to be doing some more work with the front row as I go forward. But as far as systems go, this is a lot of things that I, I really like as far as a flip class tool. Thanks so much for tuning in to Patui Talk. I am Dr. Sam Patterson, and it's been a pleasure showing you what we're doing. If you have questions, please tweet at me at Sam Patui, or send me a message some other way. I'm all over the place. Thanks. Bye.